The first time I heard about the Timex Marlin Jet Automatic was courtesy of Hudinki, and it was this photograph that initially caught my eye. To me, it just looked like a really interesting watch. Initially, I didn't know it was a Timex until I read the article headline. Timex is a watch brand that I have known about for as long as I can remember, but I'm not really sure why. I know the Timex name, however, nothing really stands out for me as far as the watch brand is concerned. It held no appeal for me, and that made me realize that I didn't know anything about Timex. So I looked it up. But that was after I'd already made the purchase. I guess I'd just never considered looking at Timex watches before. Having had a browse online, I'm still not entirely convinced that beyond the Marlin Jet, there's much more that interests me with Timex watches. However, this particular release certainly made me more curious. There was something about the design and shape of the domed crystalline profile. I like the way Hezlite looks and feels to the touch, and also the dial face itself that first drew my eye. I liked the subdial at the nine o'clock position. Initially, I hoped it might be a GMT hour hand, but the reality is that it's little more than an AM PM indicator. Either way, I think the subdial looks great. The case size at 38 millimeters also appealed to me, given my tendency towards smaller watches. And frankly, that was enough for me to decide to give it a go, the way it looked and the size of the watch. This was a complete impulse buy, and at the price, I didn't stop to think twice. Besides, the Hodinki article sufficiently piqued my curiosity and that was validation enough. Whilst my overriding thought was, at this price, how far could I go wrong? If I'm completely honest, I did wonder whether I'd later regret my impulsiveness. No one wants to waste money. In the event, I didn't hesitate and I ordered the watch online and it was delivered through my door 10 days later. First impressions of the watch in hand are pretty decent. It's very much as I'd expected given the photographs I'd seen. And having now worn it for a few days, I haven't wanted to take it off. So I thought I'd share my thoughts on this rather unusual and enchanting looking timepiece. The Timex Marlin Jet neatly combines a number of things that I like and appreciate. Most of all, it has a cool, sophisticated, yet understated appearance, being smart, but at the same time casual. It has an unusual look, but it stops short of being bizarre. The Timex website cites the watch as being a space age sensation, with its most defining feature being the domed hezolite crystal, enveloping the grooved bezel, bearing the Marlin name, bringing captivating depth to its retro futuristic appearance. This statement resonates with me. It's all about the Hezolite crystal design. It goes on to say, this unique crystal covers the entire top surface of the watch case and blends seamlessly into the flat case sides, leaving only the lugs exposed. The case sides smoothly transition to a screwed on ex exhibition case back that mirrors the crystal's domed contour, enhancing the watch's streamlined profile and space age aesthetics. The domed Hezolite crystal on the Marlin Jet reminds me of one of the reasons why I opted to buy the Hezolite version of Omega's Moon Watch in preference to the Sapphire crystal version. Basically what swayed me was the story of why Hezolite was chosen to be the original Moon Watch in preference to the Sapphire crystal. The reason being that Unlike the sapphire crystal, if the hezolite were to take a sharp knock up in space and break, it would crack, but it wouldn't shatter into lots of small fragments. That was a risk that couldn't be taken on the mission to the moon, and it was one of those feature items that really resonated with me. It never ceases to amaze me how design specifications like this, or a 500 meter water resistance, let alone a two or 3,000 meter depth rating, hold such appeal. I mean, how many of us are ever likely to find ourselves diving to such depths or deploying a Martin Baker ejection seat, let alone taking a trip to the moon? But oddly, they do still have an appeal and impact. The word Marlin 
features on the encased bezel at both 12 and 6 o'clock. However, this doesn't stand out nearly as much as it does in the official release photos. It's far less noticeable in reality, and it doesn't concern me at all. If anything, I rather like it. Instead, my eye is drawn to the enchanting way light catches the domed hesalite, and also the bezel in daylight, plus the shadows thrown by the concave dial, which adds depth to the dial. Retrofuturistic is how Timex described the Marlin jet, and to my eye, there's something achingly cool about its look and feel. I think it might partly be attributable to the size of the dial, which appears rather smaller than the 38mm case size suggests, largely because of the design of the Hesalite and how it envelops the bezel. In my mind, I'm reminded of the way the Moonwatch looks side on. The futuristic bit for me is the dial colour and texture, which is sort of spaceship in presentation. It reminds me of the dial on my Bremont Supersonic, which was inspired by the special paint used on Concorde. Also, the clean lines on the crown, along the side of the bezel, and which are continued on the rear of the case. Its shiny complexion contrasts with the brushed stainless steel sides and lugs. There's a display case back on the rear, which is sort of befitting, and whilst the movement is slightly decorated, it's really not the right side of the watch to focus upon. The dial's concave shape at the outer edges of the minute track mean that the applied indices, there are Arabic numbers on the subdial only, are in set. It's another interesting design feature, although this isn't immediately apparent, and I think is only something that you notice on a second take once your curiosity gets the better of you. A bit like the crosshair on the dial, which for me really works. The domed Hezlite crystal brings a lot to the look and feel of this watch, and yet this photograph, which is the primary image on the Timex website, simply doesn't convey how the Marlin jet looks in hand or on wrist, and I honestly would not have looked twice had I seen this product photograph first. It's far too flat, and it completely loses the concave dial shape and the inset applied indices, not to mention it neuters the Hesalite hemisphere and stylish persona that's so central to the appeal of this timepiece. Initially, I thought I might be turned off by the pearl on strap, mainly because of how it's doubled up at the back of the watch. Prior to getting hands on, I was concerned that it might raise the watch too high on the wrist. On wrist, it doesn't. The fabric strap is very thin and comfortable, being almost infinitely adjustable, and it works well with the dimensions of the watch. A significant proportion of the thickness of this watch comes from the Hesalite crystal, and that makes the watch appear thinner than the specs suggest. Thick watches are a bit of a bugbear for me, and all I can tell you is that the Marlin Jet doesn't feel or wear like a thick watch at all. Ordinarily, I don't like having loops on my watch straps. The two on the buckle side are functional, however, the third stainless steel loop on the other side of the watch is superfluous. Yes, it does have a practical function here, but that's only because this style of strap was chosen to be part of the design. The watch could easily have been worn on a single pass strap. So the loop here is purely an aesthetic design choice, in my opinion. And on this watch, I'm happy to make an exception to my usual stance on this issue. I think the stainless steel loop here just brings another extra dimension and a touch of interest. Over the last few days, I could have picked up any one of my watches to wear, but I keep coming back to this one. It might be the novelty. I'm really enjoying wearing it. It's just a delightful, low-key and unassuming, yet interesting alternative to many of the other watches I own. A friend of mine who has many expensive watches saw my Marlin Jet recently, and it was interesting to witness how, much like me, he was instantly taken by it. I think it was the overall look of the watch that grabbed his attention, and there was a hint of surprise and a raised eyebrow when I explained that it was a new Timex that's priced at less than £300. The Marlin Jet looks much classier and frankly much more expensive than the price tag implies and whilst it looks shiny and smart, the fabric strap brings that touch of informality. I suppose I really like the fact that the Marlin Jet is a little unusual 
and also that it isn't showy. It's just a, it's just performing a really simple job in quite a stylish way and doing it really well, particularly for the budget. This is moon swatch money, and when I think of that watch, there's no comparison. I'd far rather have this watch. For what it's worth, I gave my mission to Mars to my father-in-law when I lost interest, shortly after making my purchase. In contrast, I'm going to hang on to this watch. I wanted to talk about some niggles. Of course, this is not a perfect watch. For me, there are a few niggles and limitations that come with the Timex Marlin Jet. My main grumble is that the crown is impractical. It's a bit of style over substance in that, given the design of the crown, it's really not easy to grip and therefore is a bit tricky to wind. So if I don't wear the watch and pick it up to wear after a few days, this is likely to get on my nerves. Who knows, it might reside on my wrist a little longer each time as a result. And when setting the watch, on a couple of occasions I found a quirk. The second hand moves erratically when setting the time. However, try as I may, I wasn't able to reproduce this on camera. It just feels cheap when I see that. It's not great. That said, this isn't high horology, nor is it pretending to be, and it prompts me to remind myself what I paid for the Marlin jet. Lastly, I would personally have preferred there to be loom on the dial, and this watch just doesn't have it. But that's a minor niggle. You can't have it all. Here's a watch I, I paid £279 for. I've bought watch straps that are more expensive. And what a cool, classy way to spend the money. In final analysis, the Marlin Jet is a nice, light, versatile and low-key option for me. I'm really impressed and I don't know of a better value proposition.